Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Inside the Press Box from Sports Knot, where we're talking everything sports. Today, it's NFL. Of course, we're just coming off the start of NFL free agency, the start of the NFL New Year, which began on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Lots of signings. We're going to get into that. We're going to tell you what we think. I'm Scott Cobranson, one of your hosts here, a writer, editor at Sports Knot, joined as always by our good friend, extraordinaire uh, writer and just purveyor of the best black turtlenecks in or shirts in the business. And that is Mr. Matt Johnson. Matt, thanks for being with us again, man. Thanks so much for having me. All right. And of course, Ryan Dyrud, who also you can see with me on the Not Zone on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. He's the founder of the LA Football Network. Uh, all right, guys, we're going to talk a little about NFL free agency uh, today as we, as we begin kind of dissecting what happened. And the first thing I want to do is really just talk about some of the key signings that we saw over the first few days, the legal tampering period, which we'll get into as well, because it's sort of a folly. But uh, when you look at the major signings uh, over the week, you look at Kirk Cousins, Danielle Hunter, Christian Wilkins, Chris Jones, Calvin Ridley, really the only big wide receiver to go. And that was, of course, on Wednesday. Saquon Barkley, Brian, Br excuse me, Brian Burns, it's a lot, it's a mouthful, traded to the New York Giants and Patrick Queen signs in the Steelers. Just an example. It's not an exhaustive list, but some of the bigger names that were signed during this period and and sort of changed the trajectory for some of their teams. But I want to get your guys' sense here for uh, what you think of the signings and, and what they mean for these teams. And I'll start with you, Matt, on this one. I mean, to me, we saw two, two uh, an edge rusher and Daniil Hunter go to Houston – and the Texans are one of the big stories to me because they just they just knocked it out of the park, I think, in free agency. They had a huge amount of cap space to do it. And then, of course, we had Christian Wilkins go to Las Vegas as well. And Chris Jones stays in Kansas City. So those those defensive linemen, two on the interior, one on the edge. Um, when you look at this entire situation and the entire free agent signing period so far, what were you impressed by and, and sort of uh, who was kind of the winner in your mind of free agency so far in this period? Yeah, you know, one of the biggest winners for me is going to be D'Amico Ryans of the Houston Texans. Because, you know, he had some young guys on that defense last year, but they still had one of the best run defense in the second half season. Now they have, add D'Amico Autry, they add Al Shazir at linebacker, and they add Daniel Hunter, which that contract, first of all, $49 million, $48 million guaranteed is, oh, buddy, <laughs> that is a lot of guaranteed money. Yeah. But they're probably the biggest winner for me because that defense, they can get, get after you with the passer. They can stop the run. They now have the corners, you know, hold up in coverage. And D'Amico Ryans, look what he did with the young defense last year. Look what we did for the San Francisco 49ers the two years before. That's going to be a top 10 defense. And you pair that with C.J. Stroud, all the weapons they have. Uh, that's going to be a Super Bowl contender this year. Wow. Yeah, no, it's it's hard not to think that. I mean, look what they did. It's it's pretty remarkable building on what uh, they were able to do in that first year with C.J. Stroud. Ryan, for you, when you look at the landscape and and what teams have done so far, we know there's more coming. We know there'll be more signings. We know there'll be more cuts uh, up to June 1st, obviously, is when mm -hmm. some of these these contracts have to stay on the on the uh, record, so to speak. Uh, but when you look at what's happened so far, who else has impressed you out there as far as what they've done to supplement their roster? Yeah, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little bit outside the box, inside mm. the press box here, and one that most people will probably see as losers. But I'm gonna go with the Minnesota Vikings as potential winners here. Ah. And you lose two big names, obviously most important position quarterback with Kirk Cousins. You lose Daniel Hunter, but under the radar, you know they signed Jonathan Greenard, who had a career year last year. They get Andrew Van Ginkle out of Miami, who was another really nice set piece at the edge. And they get Blake Cashman, kind of an underrated, you know, linebacker piece that they can add to their defense. So it's one of those like in free agency, you know, you're you're always going to lose some big name guys. Unfortunately, it, it bums the fans out. Obviously, the quarterback position they got to figure out. They get Sam Darnold. I don't think he's necessarily the the future or the answer, but we know they're probably getting the draft sweet stakes for one of the big four or at least, you know, the big three, I guess. Um, Caleb Williams going one. But, you know, I, I'm not calling them the winners. I think Matt hit it. Houston <laughs> so far is the winner. But in order to when you lose those big names, but still have some success under the radar, I think they've done some nice things and then we'll see how it pans out for them. Yeah. And I think, I think you look at some of the other teams that, that surprisingly did well uh, is, is, is even Baltimore. I look at Baltimore and yes, Gus Edwards leaves 
and Keaton Mitchell, but they get Derrick Henry, so they kind of address that as well. So, so I, it's interesting. I think that most of the teams that were strong got stronger, with the exception of I, I thought the Dolphins were going to kind of fall back. The Dolphins have actually recovered, I think, a little bit nicely in some of the signings that they were able to make. But Matt, when you look at this period too, this is where I want to talk to you about this guys because it's like you look at the situation with this legal tampering period. So we talked about it on sports, not right. Which was the idea that there was all this stuff going on. So the league trying to bring it above the uh, table, instead of having it happening under the table, created this two day period. Now we're hearing, and I think Matt, you wrote a story up on the site yesterday about the Eagles uh, or one of the teams that were talking to players before the legal tam. And we know it happens. Is this mm -hmm. whole legal tampering period just ridiculous? And why do they even do it? Because it's going to happen earlier and earlier. And then my next question for you is, how do they stop it? Yeah, it's, it is ridiculous. Because I mean, listen, the legal tam legal tampering, okay. I mean, Kirk Cousins even admitted <laughs> in his press conference, he was talking to the Falcons before the legal tampering period. Then you had, you know, Penn State and the Lions coach, James Franklin, can't beat top opponents. So he's going to ruin some secrets for NFL teams. So he gave away that Howie Roseman was talking to Squan Barkley before free agency opened, which, yes, that is a tampering violation. And, you know, talking about the merits of, you know, he can be close to Penn State, which, little fun fact, Penn State and New Jersey, about the same <laughs> distance from Philadelphia and Penn State. But, hey, you know, yeah. so you have that ruining it. And listen. This legal tampering thing, it feels just like the NBA where what the NBA, NBA did, they started docking teams late second round picks, which are things that are not going to make a difference. For the NFL, it, they'll start taking it more seriously by docking teams like a sixth round pick. But listen, if you're telling me as a GM, okay, we're going to take a sixth round pick for you, but you can start negotiating with Kirk Cousins two or three days early. <laughs> guess what? I'm going to do that because yeah. yeah, he's going to prove my team more than the sixth round pick. Yeah, I don't I don't see any way out of it, Ryan. I don't see how you how you can you don't if you extend the period, they're just going to talk earlier than that period. I mean, this is something that everyone it's the worst kept secret in the world that these agents talk to teams, even if it's through intermediaries, right? So that you can legally not be talking directly to the team, but you're talking through your agent through someone else who's connected to the I mean, there's no way around it, is there? No, I mean, it, it really isn't and it's it's such a fine line too, because you remember, you know, two years ago, Matthew Stafford was traded to the Los Angeles Rams, where him, while him and Sean McVay were in Cabo on vacation after the season, and you know, that's obviously not free agency; that was a trade. But like, yeah. what's this fine line between that? And then, obviously, if players are released early, they can do whatever the heck they want because they're not under the team's contract until when the new league year starts. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you you change it unless you just get rid of it altogether. Um, I was waiting for something to come out about Jim Harbaugh. You know, he just escaped the allegations of sign, sign stealing. So I assumed he was tampering as well, <laughs> just to add that to his resume now being in the NFL. But uh, nothing yet. We haven't heard anything yet. But he was too busy cutting the cap out here in L.A. And, and they had to get under that and, you know, release Mike Williams and whatnot. But, but yeah, Scott, to your question, like, unless they start there, there's and Matt, you you kind of said it best. But unless they start really penalizing teams like like more than a six, like, hey, we're taking a third from you mm -hmm. or a second from you. This is going to keep happening. So either they get rid of it altogether or they go that drastic and say, hey, if you're tampering, like you're losing a second round pick, which that would probably stop it. Because I don't think teams would would justify a second rounder for for early negotiating. And I think the key here to your point is if you're going to make the punishment severe enough, then people would follow it. But we don't hear, Matt, any owners complaining about the legal tampering or any of the tampering because they do it. And it's sort of like we know it's an old boys club and we know unless the owners get upset and then call Roger Goodell and force it onto a meeting agenda and try to get things changed, it's probably not going to change. Yeah. And I mean, you know, to that example, why are the New York Giants at this point not filing a complaint? Because guess what the New York Giants have been doing for all these years? <laughs> yeah. So they're not going to tell on each other because you do that. Yeah. It's going to get a dirty game. So it's either just keep the secrets behind closed door. And you don't think like, in Indy at the combine where every scout GM and agent are all just hanging out, eating steak dinners all week. Like they're not chit chatting about their oh. clients. Like, of oh, course. <laughs> listen, we were there. It, no, it was completely yeah. settled. There was, there was no backroom dealings or anything that, that, that didn't happen. No. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see any no meetings. alcohol was drank. Nothing like that. No, like, nothing no happened meetings. in the hotel lobbies. Yeah, yeah. There was, there was nothing going on there. Uh, but, but, but it's interesting. One of the things too, that jumps out of me during this free agency period too. And, and with all due respect and, Apologies ahead of time for you Cowboys fans out there. 
What the heck is going on with the Cowboys, Ryan? I mean, the Cowboys do nothing. They have several areas of need on that team. Of course, they're trying to work on some kind of deal uh, with Zach, uh, Dak Prescott, but uh, they just didn't do anything. And so w- what is it with the Cowboys? They, they, they can't get over the hump of the playoffs. We all know that situation. They keep Mike McCarthy, and then they're completely quiet, shut out of free agency. Yeah, they finally got on the board last night, right, with yeah. Eric Kendricks after he bailed on the Niners, which uh, I know Rams fans were happy that he <laughs> left the division. Um, but yeah, you know, we talked about it a little bit yesterday in the Nod Zone, Scott. I, the more I think about it, I think they're just, they're not an innovative. And when you look at these teams, they franchise anymore. With restructures, with, you know, molding the cap how they want, being creative. The Cowboys seem to kind of go chalk. They, I think they were of yesterday, like $2 million in cap space. And so without restructuring, they really couldn't do anything. And so I think mm-hmm. they just, they're not forward thinking. I mean, we've seen that now with them retaining Mike McCarthy two years in a row after everyone thought he would be done two years ago and, um, and whatnot. And, you know, losing good coordinators because of that. Um, so I think they're just not forward thinking enough to, to get ahead of it. And obviously this roster is no better than it was at the end of the season, meaning they're no closer to achieving the goal they've had now for what, 30 plus years. Yeah. So I don't think anything's changing down there in the big D. <laughs> Matt, what do you think the Cowboys? I mean, what, what? Ryan brings up a good point. It's like innovative. Like you see what Houston's done. You see what some of these other teams are doing to get themselves going. And then you got the Cowboys who have the biggest brand in sports, uh, most valuable franchise, all that stuff. And it's Jerry Jones, right? Yeah. I mean, everything here is being hit that needs to be talked about with the Cowboys because there needs to be a serious discussion. Jerry Jones talked, you know, about a month ago, the Cowboys are going to go all in. They are all in on competing for Super Bowl. And then in the recent days, we've learned Derrick Henry was out of their price range. The second tier running backs in free agency were a bit out of their price range. And they're just, yeah, they're just not going to be very involved in free agency because it's, they don't like the price points for anyone. And they, it kind of speaks to the fact of, listen, everything Jerry Jones is saying, he's a PR, he's a brand guy now. He's not about Super Bowls. Those mm. times for competing for decades ago, he he kind of cares about the franchise value now. He cares about ticket sales. If, if the Super Bowl happens with the Rock Street currently has, great. But ticket sales and all that, it's important to him. And other thing is just like the issue they have is they're great at drafting and developing, but that's all they do now. You have to do both for agency and the draft to win. And the Dallas Cowboys are sticking to their draft and develop philosophy, which guess what you get? You get 30 years of disappointment. And guess what you're going to get this year? An NFC divisional round loss. Congrats, Dallas. There he is, Mr. Glass half full. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but but it's no, it's a great point. And I agree with you. It's it's sort of like you 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 expect different results doing the same thing over and over again, like the definition of insanity, right? And and so I feel for cowboy fans out there and 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 we'll see what they do. My question now, too, Matt, for you on this, returning to you, is um, so we saw what's happened here during free agency. And like I said, more moves to come. There might there might be some trades coming up as well that are pretty significant. But you look at what happened in free agency and some of these teams that had needs, it certainly has an impact on next month's NFL draft. When you look at the race for the top four, I'll call them four, I think there's three, but everybody loves J.J. McCarthy all of a sudden, four quarterbacks in that first round of the NFL draft, we saw some teams jump out of that competition, right? We saw the Falcons obviously going in on Kirk Cousins. They're not going to be as interested. Now the Vikings need a quarterback, so they already were rumored to maybe try to move up. How did that free agency, not only at the quarterback position, but how did the free agency overall in the net that we saw there impact the first round of what you see happening in the draft? Yeah, I think with the first round, we're going to see that free agency told us is the top three picks are locked in. I think the Falcons probably checked in on number two. Same for the Raiders, checked in on number two, number three overall. Probably made offers. The price point was something where even in their quarterback desperation, they weren't going to be able to pay that because New England and Washington made it clear, hey, unless you're meeting this price, we're taking quarterback here. So, yeah, that's what we saw. Washington, New England, both brought in backup quarterbacks. Chicago's probably going to do the same. So you're going to see Caleb Williams go number one. Then it becomes Jaden Daniels and Drake May at two or three. So then if you're Minnesota, you're looking at trading up for J.J. McCarthy. And uh, <laughs> my reaction should Not tell a big you everything. Fan. <laughs> should tell you everything about how I feel about that. But so yeah, this congrats for the NFL draft. The top three picks are locked in. We might not know who's two and three, but we know what position it'll be. And yeah, that's what Brandon told us. And one other thing I will add, 
that Fred Seahawks told us, because this is rare, especially with what happened last year with running backs getting tagged or staying on the market for a while. You saw the top running backs all fly off the board in like hours. And that should tell you the NFL is not high on this running back class in the draft. Because right. they're paying dudes, oh, buddy, they do not like this year's crop. Yeah, it's interesting. And Ryan, one thing we saw too with the free agency, except for the Calvin Ridley signing late Wednesday, um, remember a couple of years ago how hot the wide receiver market was. Now, part of that mm -hmm. is who was available. We have some big names like Odell Beckham. Those guys, they're past their prime, so they're not in the prime of their careers. But uh, we're just we didn't see value that we didn't see a, the, the teams value a lot of folks. Now, there are some good wide receivers in the draft. It's not as deep or as bad as the running back class. Uh, but what did you learn and what did you think uh, based on free agency, how it might impact the draft going into Detroit in April? Yeah, I think you kind of answered it there. Um, I think opposite of like what Matt said, I think the, the teams feel better about the wide receiver class. So not having to spend big because of um, the potential wide receivers. I mean, you look at some guys you can get in the third, fourth and fifth rounds, I think are, are pretty good value uh, in this class. Cause it is, it is more top heavy, but it's, it's deeper than, you know, it was maybe in, you know, like last year or whatnot. So, and that feels good. And then, and then the names and the, the, the player talent pool that was there. I mean, the real big fish was Mike, uh, Mike Evans, who re-signed with Tampa Bay before the the period mm -hmm. even started. So um, you have Mike Williams now available. So we'll see what what kind of market he has uh, after just being released yesterday from the Chargers. Um, but yeah, I just it wasn't a a robust receiver talent pool. Like there was really no. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, and you guys can correct me. But the there really wasn't a true like wide no. receiver one out there to be had. So and when you free agency, we've talked about all the time. Like you're always going to have to overspend, no matter what you overspend in free agency. And so paying a, a wide receiver two or three wide receiver one money when you have this receiver draft class, obviously did not happen and the period dictated that and yeah. told us that. No, no question. And and the last thing we'll talk about before we say goodbye to our friends here uh on the show is uh the Bears and Justin Fields. So Ryan, you know, Justin Fields we heard initially there was interest that he was going to command a second round pick. Then we go to the combine, we hear it's heating up. Atlanta was one of those teams that we heard about of course they went to Kirk Cousins. Then we started hearing well maybe it's a third round. And now we're hearing that they might not be able to trade him at all. When you look at the Justin Fields situation, clearly Chicago is going to take Caleb Williams. I believe that in my heart of hearts, you couldn't convince me otherwise. And um, they're going to do that. Uh, what are they going to do with Justin Fields? And, and despite, I understand he's a work in progress and he might not be the starter there in Chicago anymore. But what do you, what do you think is the reason why there's so little interest? Is it because Chicago they know what Chicago is going to do, so they have no leverage. Or is it because you think the NFL and scouts around the league just don't think Justin Fields is worth that kind of draft capital? Was this for that me was or for Matt? you, Sorry, right? I didn't hear yep. the name you said. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah, it's fascinating how it goes. Um, I think it's a, a a little combo of both. I think you know what he's put on tape. Uh, no one was going to be ever willing to give up, you know, mm -hmm. high capital for, and then now seeing how it's played out and seeing, you know, the, the best or the not best kept secret that they will take Caleb Williams. It's like, all right, well, why am I going to rush when we know what you're doing? We know you're desperate to go. Um, I know there's been talk about them potentially just keeping him. Um, I don't see that happening. You never want to draft your franchise quarterback and having the last <laughs> franchise quarterback trying to compete and looking yeah. over his shoulder. Um, so I think this will, this will play out like the Arizona Cardinals from a few years ago where, they, they traded Josh Rosen on draft day after taking Kyler Murray. Um, and so I could see the Bears, you know, when, when a team, maybe a QB board doesn't fall how they want or whatever, then they make a trade on draft day. You know, I'm not saying it won't be done before that, but by last resort, I think it'll happen on draft day to a team that maybe needs a backup or a team like, you know, Minnesota or Denver, if they weren't able to get mm. a quarterback they wanted it at some round or juncture. Now, Minnesota obviously is in the same division, so that's a little tricky there. Um, but I think that's what we'll see is maybe a, a draft day trade. But but yeah, to your point, it's just, yeah, I just don't think the leverage is there. I don't think the value is there on tape uh, that anyone's willing to really part with anything outside of, you know, a yeah, bottom round. Interesting. Pick. All right, Matt, tell me. Where will Justin Fields, what helmet is he going to play pulling on over his head next year in the NFL? Mm. I'm going to say the Philadelphia Eagles. The Rats. Eagles. Explain. Because, listen, this is a situation now with, first of all, Chicago Bears. Any, and inside the press box, we're not going to give you, you know, oh, the 
PR agent or team quotes <laughs> about how, oh, you know, they're they're taking their time. They're not going to make this decision on Justin Fields until they're really sure about Caleb Williams. Listen, that's damage control. Chicago made their decision months ago. Mm. Justin Fields is gone, and his trade value has now reached a point because the Bears kind of botched this, where it's going to be potentially a conditional day three pick. Maybe it's going to be a fifth round pick, and he's in a situation where he's going to have to kind of go the Mitch Trubisky route of you go to a great team with a great offense coordinator, a great quarterback, and you spend that year, you know, just learning. And your agent feeds local beat writers in the area. Hey, he's doing a really great job. He's maturing. He's learning all these different things. And then you become a free agent next in 2025 and you cash in that way. And mm. that's the only option for Justin Fields. And it should work out from long term. But for the Bears, it was just a bad, bad, bad handling of this situation. Of course, that's nothing new for this team. <laughs> <laughs> we just put an article yeah. up yesterday, Scott, on LFB Network about uh, Fields going ah, to the Rams. So. See, interesting no backup quarterback right now they i know they probably want to re-sign yeah. wentz but um you know there's an opportunity where stafford's 36 they trade for fields maybe mcveigh can transform him into the quarterback of the future and that's not years, a bad so. that's not a bad matchup if you think about it. i think mcveigh his system mcveigh himself with a quarterback like that um might be might be a good 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 situation for him so i mean look I know it was only a brief period of time, but but even Baker Mayfield went there, had a little bit of injection of energy, and then went on, and of course, uh, then went eventually ended up in Tampa, where he had a good season last year. So yes, yes no, exactly, yeah. exactly. All right, we are now done with this edition of Inside the Press Box. We hope you enjoyed it. Do us a favor, by the way. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel here for Sports Not. Hit that notifications bell. Also, the thumbs up. We would appreciate it as well and we will be back very soon talking about all kinds of subjects you know we got college basketball march madness coming up baseball starting so we're going to get into all of it here we don't just do football here but we do everything and like matt said we're not going to give you the sugar-coated version we're going to tell you like uh t tell it like it is and tell you what we think so we appreciate it ryan matt thanks so much for being with us today thank you Thank you. My only gripe is every press box I've been in provides lunch <laughs> or dinner or food. So I don't oh, know what yeah. the meal is at here, Scott, but we'll, always we'll, good to We'll try next you. time. We'll try next time. We'll virtually feed you, Ryan. Does that sound good? Beautiful. Right. That works. I'm an, I'm an easy man. All right. Man. That's awesome. All right. For everybody here at Sports Not, thanks for being with us here on Inside the Press Box. Make sure you keep up with coverage of all your favorite sports at sportsnot.com. And again, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. For Ryan, for Matt, I'm Scott Branson. We'll talk to you next time.